My dear Redemptorist confrères, my dear Redemptorist partners in mission, our lay missionaries, our associates, our collaborators, our benefactors, our oblates, our Redemptoristine sisters, and all sisters associated with our Redemptorist charism and mission, and you, my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you to the second day of our Tridium in preparation for the Feast of St. Gerard Magella. Today we are reflecting on Gerard Magella and the vow of chastity. I'd like to recall for you the essence of the vowed life, namely, as a Redemptorist missionary, a religious, we consecrate ourselves to Jesus the Redeemer and to his mission. This is the core of the living of our vowed life. Consecration to Jesus the Redeemer and his mission. How do we understand the vow of chastity? Let me read to you for constitution number 58 of the Redemptorist constitutions and statutes. It's the members of the congregation giving themselves to the mystery of love, the love of Christ and his church, choose celibacy for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. They do so to dedicate themselves as individuals and as a community to God and to the mission of Christ, so that they may concern themselves wholeheartedly with the things of the Lord, love and serve their neighbor, manifest the church's own love of Christ and proclaim the future reality of heavenly life. From this constitution, it is clear that chastity is a way of life. Chastity is a way of life of love. Rooted in the love of God for me and a response I make to God's love where God becomes the essence, the sole purpose of my life. I who am loved, I love the Lord with my whole heart, my whole soul, my whole being. This is the core of the vow of chastity, that one consecrate oneself to the Redeemer and his mission over everything else. Nothing else is more important. No one else is more important but the Redeemer and his mission. Does this mean that a Redemptorist living his vow of chastity does not love? On the contrary, the Redemptorist living his vow of chastity learns to experience the love of the Lord. And from that love, he loves the Lord, and because he loves the Lord, he manifests the love of the Lord by loving not just one, but by loving all especially those in his community, his own brothers, in the redemptorist way of life, and God's people, the church, and beyond the church, anyone who feels excluded, anyone who is longing for a sense of understanding of love, the love of the Lord. Yes, the vow of chastity is not easy. The vow of chastity lived is difficult. But one lives it with this great hope that today we live what we will one day experience in perfection in the kingdom in heaven. The vow of chastity is seen and lived through three dimensions. The first is a gift of oneself in love totally to God. The second, a gift of oneself in love totally to one's brothers in community. And third, a gift of oneself in love to people. To be ready to serve and care for people, especially those with difficulty, those in trouble. Let us look at these three dimensions and see how Jared lived joyfully with a serenity and a freedom his vow of chastity. First, 
total love for God. Jared was totally enamored with his God. He just didn't say, my God, in his prayers or in his conversations with God. He always used a very strong Italian expression in talking about God. He would say, il mio carissimo Dio. To translate that, my most beloved God. Why did Jared use such a powerful expression of love? Because Jared experienced being loved. He was the beloved of God, Jared was. And so in response to that, Jared could only speak of il mio carissimo Dio, my most beloved God. Jared walked. Jared prayed, Jared worked always with this awareness that his beloved God was with him constantly, that he was special to God. And so his only response was, I love you with my whole heart and soul. At the center of his life, above anything and above anyone, was el mio carissimo Dio his beloved God. The second dimension of the vow of celibacy lived by Jared was a warm fraternal life in community. When one loves God, one wants to share that love in community. Every member of the community, despite how he was, with his eccentricities, was a means to express one's love for God. Jared used all his gifts and talents in community. Whether it was being with the, fa- with the brothers, whether it was being with the fathers. Jared was an amazing storyteller. He was an amazing actor. He loved to act in plays as a young man. And now in community at recreation, Jared would tell stories. And the community would listen, completely taken up by his storytelling. Jared would act, and the community would rejoice in the way he could act. Jared was the life of community recreation. But apart from that, the tailor's room was a place where everybody wanted to go to, not just to get their clothes darned or their habits stitched, but to listen to Jared. He always had a story to tell. He always had a joke to share. There was this sense of warmth, of fraternal life. Jared in the community was a joyful, lively spirit. There it is. One who lives the vow of chastity, of celibacy, lives it joyfully in relationships in community. Is totally other-centered. The third dimension of the vow of celibacy is a heart open to people, especially suffering people, abandoned people, people in difficulty, people with their troubles. The vow of celibacy opens oneself to realize that the love of God is materialized, is lived through love of neighbor, especially the neighbor in difficulty, in trouble in brokenness, like the parable of the Good Samaritan. Here again, Jared excels. Jared had the ability to relate to different groups of people, whether it were the simple, uneducated, illiterate, whether it were priests and religious, members of the community, women religious, whether it were wealthy and rich patrons and donors, Whether it was the people on the missions, children, whether people who came to the door, Jared could connect with people. The vow of chastity enabled Jared to manifest the love of Jesus through his heart to people. So much so that people were attracted to him. They wanted to spend time with him. They could open their hearts to him. And Jared would draw them to Jesus. He would draw them to Jesus. He learned all of this from time spent before Jesus himself in the Blessed Sacrament. The love of Jesus in the Eucharist for Jared enabled Jared to love like Jesus 
a love that embraces everyone. Jared lived his vow of celibacy not in a negative manner, not in a manner that looked at celibacy as a running away from the world, celibacy as giving up the pleasures of the world, but celibacy as embracing the life of Jesus, a life of pure, selfless love. This was not easy for Jared, but Jared found a means, a powerful means to live his vow of celibacy, the Blessed Mother. The Blessed Mother, whom Jared loved as the most beautiful lady, he would always call her my beautiful lady. He would turn to her and seek her intercession and protection to live celibacy, especially against the temptations to break the vow of celibacy. His prayer to the Blessed Mother was always to protect him in living a life of purity. We learn from our great saint, our great patron, Jared, our redemptress brother, redemptress missionary. But we too are called to grow every day like Jared into deep love for Jesus, the most holy redeemer. To share the love of Jesus first and foremost in a warm, joyful manner in our life in community with our brothers in community. And above all, to open our hearts and free our hearts from selfishness and self-centeredness to be close to people, especially suffering and troubled people. We pray through the intercession of St. Jared that all of us redemptors live joyfully this vow of celibacy, the vow to experience being loved and to love the Lord in and through our brothers and in and through his people as missionaries of hope in the footsteps Novena to St. Jared Magella. Most blessed and holy Trinity, I thank you for all the gifts and privileges which you granted St. Jared, especially for those virtues with which you adorned him on earth and the glory which you now impart to him in heaven. Accomplish your work, O Lord, so that your kingdom may come about on earth. Through his merits, in union with those of Jesus and Mary, grant me the grace for which I ask. And you, my powerful intercessor, St. Jared, always so ready to help those who have recourse to you, pray for me. Come before the throne of divine mercy and do not leave without being heard. To you, I confide this important and urgent affair. Graciously take my cause in hand and do not let me end this novena without having experienced some way the effects of your intercession. Amen. A special prayer for the gift of a child. O good Saint Jared, powerful intercessor before the throne of God, wonder worker of our day, I call upon you and seek your help. While on earth, you always fulfill God's design. Help me to always to do God's holy will. Beseech the master of life from whom all parenthood proceeds to bless. Please mention yourself or anyone you know who is in need of a blessing for the gift of a child. with the gift of a child, that as a good Christian parent, we may raise up children to God in this life and heirs to the kingdom of God's glory in the life to come. Amen. And so let us pray to our Father in heaven in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. to me